Okay, and here's with the uh, the new cooler in it. Uh, you see this one's got a digital display. I put that little piece of tape there. It's got a slight little crack in the face plate. Supposedly sending me a new one. At least this one uh, gives me a, an indication of the CPU temperature at any given moment. And I'm going to start running the test and see what it does compared to uh, when I did the other day. All right, there it starts. Uh, let's see. It shows the uh, CPU going up to 78. 80. 81. There we go. So it shows 84 there and 84 there. So it's right in line. So it's nice that it gives me a on the fly indication of the CPU temperature. I've been trying to figure out a way to do this cheaply. Um, and the only other way I could do it was with a, a sensor indicator. I had this this phone set up to be a, a, a temperature indicator. But the problem was it was always turning off or I would have to turn it off and it was just difficult to get it hooked up and in a good place. But here I got this one set up. It's on there all the time. So now I'll be able to tell at a glance what the CPU temperature is. And by the way, this is only $24. If you get the one without the RGB fan on the bottom is only $22 from Amazon. So, two years ago almost, I bought some Carbonaut. That's a real thin thermal pad for it, but never got around to putting it in. So I put it in today. So I couldn't tell you if it was doing any better or worse or and I increased the fan speed and it dropped it another four, five, six degrees. It got up to 87 before, after about five minutes. So we'll find out how hot it's going to get this time after about five minutes. And after seven and a half minutes, 83 and 83, not getting any warmer, 83.6, 83.5. Keeps hovering right around there. So I think this is a success. And I said that cooler is only 22 to 24 bucks. And this is the final result. I uh, changed the tape marking things on the uh, cooler faceplate. And then I put some... Uh, uh, electrical tape on my uh, GPU to give it a little color. I may change that around, but this is what it finally ended up looking like. So, I said you can get that cooler on Amazon for 22 to 24 bucks. New egg sells it for 29 sometimes. Uh, and that's what it is. It's the Thermal Right Assassin X 120R Digital ARGB White. <laughs> Uh, they also sell it without the ARGB, which is just a fan, uh, for $2 less. But for $2, I always thought I could use an extra ARGB fan. Um, so this is just the, uh, let's see, the single tower. They have two, dual towers. I just didn't think it was necessary, and it doesn't seem to be. And now i got to switch in between the uh, CPU and the GPU temperatures. Uh, I can also include in there uh, how much energy is putting out, I guess they would call it. Uh, so, but I, I don't care about that because I know I'm never overusing it, overstressing it. And uh, this is the TRCC software you download to be able to control the information you want. Uh, I can also put the CPU percentage on there, the GPU percentage. I said four or five percent for that CPU CPUs. Like yeah, yeah. CPU for sale. Yeah. So like I said, I don't care about those. So I click those off. I can change it any color I want. Um, can do it breathing if you want. Color cycle. 
Rainbow. Blah, blah, blah. You can mess around with it. I just got it set now to match all the other colors I have. It was real easy to download the, the software. And it took off all by itself. I didn't do anything. I just plugged in the, the cooler, turned it on, and within a minute or two, it was up and running. So... And, uh, by the way, I'm not getting paid a dime for this. I just thought of looking for information on this CPU cooler, and there's none on YouTube for it. So I thought, well, now that I got it, <coughs> I better put one up. But I think it works great, especially for the price. Um, the, the dual tower coolers like this have all four of these displays down at the bottom, the CPU, CPU percentage and all that stuff on display all the time, I believe. But this one, it's only one at a time and it cycles through it if you want. I said, all they got to do is click this button down here and it'll go just stay right on the CPU. Which is the only thing I care about because my GPU never was going to get too hot. The video games I play will never stress my GPU. So... Alright, this is a Conquest of the New World. It's a game that came out in 1997, I believe. It's a DOS-based game. And for those too young to know, DOS is what computers ran on before Windows. <laughs> so, and for a long time after Windows came out, if you wanted to play a game, you had to be able to figure it out and set it up on through DOS. Otherwise, it wasn't going to work very well. It wasn't until close to the 2000s that they were able to figure that out. Uh, anyway, this is a, it's just a fun game. You start out with just a, a t like right here on the border with one little ship and a couple little people. And that's the only thing. This little square here is the only thing you can see. Everything else is black. And as you take a turn, you uncover more stuff and you start building town. Uh, but you take a turn and then you turn it over to the computer. And then it takes its turn. And then... Back and forth and back and forth. That's what they call a turn-based game. Um, yes, I, I've been playing this since 1997, and it's one of the few games that has stuck with me through all the years that I still enjoy playing. Not a whole lot of those anymore, so... Yeah, this is a conquest of the new world.